morning guys, it's Cecilia aka For Real Stealer with 90 Days to Do and I am my last Bitcoin club. Just coming to you today, it's a beautiful rainy Wednesday. Have a great week guys, I'm just saying. Put some goals in front of you. Listen, I just registered for the um, real estate expo that's coming to Edison, New Jersey in August. I'm super excited. They're going to have like some of the top notch people in real estate and financial literacy there. So I'm empowered already. I'm just energized. I'm really excited. I'm just like, you know, gotta be there. It's my guy's um, birthday weekend that weekend, but you know what? I, I gotta make these moves towards progress. I have to be in it to win it. That's like the lottery. So I'm putting myself again in the position to be offered financial um, assistance as far as private money lenders, um, conglomerates, um, team building, I'm networking, I'm learning tricks and traits from people who already have millions, who are building empires and who have generational wealth and who talk about trust and process. You know, I got the Susie Orman's um, protection kit, right? The gold um, briefcase. Oh my God. I am super excited about that because now when I leave and I leave that wealth legacy, it's not going to be sitting in probate court for no judges and their people to go over and select who is going to get this and who's going to get that. When I have a will, it's coming with a trust and that trust is dead stamp what is going to happen from point A to point Z. There is no judge no jury no peers or anything that can say otherwise because it is written and it's an irrevocable trust so I, i'm just a revocable trust so i'm excited about having these tools i'm excited about even knowing about stuff like this and being able to enact and and be part of things so huge like this is huge this is like for me it's just it's another world. You just got to see it. Now, I went back to this house I was looking at. Um, I had, you know, a good feeling about the property. But unfortunately, for a flip or for um, to make profit, it wouldn't have worked. The numbers wouldn't have worked. I knew that when I put together my deal analyzer. But I still wanted to take a second look at the property. I wanted to get a better um, feeling of what would be required to rehabitate this place which was a nice place but it had shortcomings and it had things that um, wouldn't work or could have led into a lot of um, a lot of unforeseen troubles if I would have tried to um, utilize the space the way I wanted to it, it could have been a, a problematic property to flip so I had to walk away but listen i'm sure that many more will come there will be um there will be properties that are going to work that are very workable that are the right price and the right timing um timing is everything you know i just hope that happens soon because you know it'll be a year soon that i've been into real estate investing it'll be a year in, in september actually so I really would love to have my first deal before then. I think that it's totally possible. Um, I'm still looking for properties for Airbnb. Um, I'm gonna send down some mailings through real flow because I think it's a powerful tool. However, I have to utilize um, the mailings to my best ability. So I'm trying to see you know how often I want to send it do I want to do a campaign that lasts for let's say four mailings or three mailings and how many people I want to target I'm targeting particular types of properties and um, owners and I want my letter that goes out to be um, very clear what my intent is and how it can benefit the people who respond so it's something that I, i'm putting in the planning i have my letter but it's too long i didn't know that um i was restricted to a certain amount of um, fields or characters in these letters when i decided to put together my mailing so now that is a challenge
challenge for me because I have to put a great letter that explains all of that into segments and make it work. And I'm not sure if it, it feels right to me as a professional, looking at it from my perspective. Maybe for some other people, yeah, it would be good, but for me, I think it needs to be more clear. So those are things that I am um, thinking about right now is a little benchmarks and challenges that I'm having. But I'm really, uh, really hyped, man. I'm excited I took this time to invest in myself yet again, and I'm gonna keep trying. Nothing is going to deter me from doing what I want to do. Again, I look at my vision board. I think about all the things that I want to do. I think about changes in my life. I think about um, just, all right, um, they say that politics has nothing to do with it, but it has a lot to do with a lot of stuff, right? We're looking at governments who don't like philanthropy. They don't like um, programs that help the needy. Honestly, they just try to take away everything. They cut budgets left and right. They change program regulations and restrict um, agencies that um, that administer these programs and they chokehold them into smaller and smaller portions of funding to run a program that is designed to help, you know, thousands, several thousands of people. Uh, we have a program at agency that is running um, and servicing thousands of households and helping people every day to keep their lights on, helping people to pay the cost of heat, helping people to pay the cost of air conditioning, helping to decrease their energy burden. And yet that program is threatened. And not only is the program threatened, the you know, the budget is really stagnant and it's no longer it's not really a guaranteed job, let's say it like that. So, with that being said, I know for sure <laughs> I gotta have ulterior plans. I have to have more streams of cash flow. I have to make sure that nothing changes. When that changes, that nothing goes left and everything just goes right. So, I have to make sure that my, um, my dollars are meeting. You know, all of my ends of meeting and and then falling over one another and holding hands and pushing up each other. So that's what I'm talking about. Um, and this is just what we, we encourage people inside of our community, inside of MLS to do. Like, we are into cash flow. We're into elevation. We're into generating cash flow learning how to protect it, and learning how to make it grow. So it's super important to know that if one system or one set of values changes, that there are others in play that will um, take up the space. You know, you don't have to be stuck. You don't have to stagnate. You don't have to be um, dependent or relying on just one income. Like, it's just not the thing. That's the thing of the past. That's something that people should not have to ever do or have to worry about, well, what happens? What happens if I lose my job? Or what happens if this doesn't work? Because then you're left very fed. You are left without a roof over your head. You're left without clothes or transportation. You're left without food sometimes or medication. So, there's always got to be a plan B, guys, a plan C, a plan D, and an E and an F if you need them, but just, just learn as many tools as you can. You have to learn about savings, learn about finance, learn about um, that infinite banking system, learn about other ways to generate cash flow, learn how to utilize your credit. Learn ways that you can work easier, smarter, and not harder, and and meet those goals and those benchmarks. So I'm telling you, um, it's a scary, scary thing. And every day, I have fear. I still got that fud, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And you know, we.
we're supposed to have fear and face everything and rise, but um, sometimes it gets a little scary. Sometimes you're not sure, you're uncertain about things, and it's okay to have that uncertainty. Just know that you got to put it into prayer, and you have to study, and you have to focus, and you have to learn some ideals, and, and stick to it, this, and, and work towards what you want in life. You can't just give up because this thing is hard. And I know that for a fact because shit, sometimes I'll be like, oh, it's too much. I'll be burning my candle up both ends. And sometimes like the drain worn out and I feel like my progress is not where it should be. Others say, oh my God, you've gotten so much done. Oh my God, you're doing so much. But I, for myself, I want more. I want to see more results. I want to see more happening. So that means doing a little bit of something a little bit differently and making some more impactful moves, like registering to go to events like this, taking the initiative and not sitting back and waiting for somebody else to say, hey, are you going to do this? Or hey, are you going to this event? Because you know what? There's stuff like this that if I wasn't in the right mindset, I would just look out and be like, oh, it's just one of them things that people were just going to, um, they're going to bait you. Of course it is. It's, they're always trying to sell you something. It's always a catch. You know, it's always something extra or they give you just enough information to give you just a little, you know. But the thing about this type of event and that people don't realize that when you go, you show initiative, you show a desire, you, you, you get to network with people of like-mindedness, people who are searching for the same results or something else different or significant to change their life and will be impactful. And you learn things or it can remind you of things or it gives you that energy that you need when you've been drained and you don't feel like doing this shit no more and you feel like oh my god it's too much it's too hard it's just it's that but then you have people motivating you encouraging you and telling you hey yes you can and it's gonna happen and this is how and what to do with this and what to do with that and i'm excited about that and that is giving me you know a renewed feeling of 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 you know, it's just a good feeling. It's an empowering moment just even thinking about the event in itself. So I just know when August comes, it's going to be that much more fabulous a feeling. You know, I'm looking so forward to this. I'm going to reach out to a couple of people from my um, Fortune Builders Mastery Group and see if they are attending this, which I'm sure they are. I mean, if they're not, I'd be surprised. Um, the only thing that will keep them from it is if they're at Ignite or something. And I think that Ignite is in October. And there's a couple of Fortune Builders um, boot camps going on in Colorado and then them in um, North Carolina. There's a few going on. I got to look because I didn't even look at any of them because I knew right now I can't travel. But anything that comes in the tri-state area up here, New Jersey, PA, you know, um, Connecticut area, I am definitely going to take advantage of that and I think it's just a wonderful thing that this event even though it's not a fortune builders event it has people who are connected with fortune builders in it and it has other type of philanthropists and funders and um, gurus who know a little bit about a lot of things or a lot about a little of things and they're all great to know it's all good and I look so forward to it so, just talking, feeling good, feeling great about the day, feeling great about opportunities. Even if it's rainy, it doesn't matter to me. I got a rain jacket, okay? So, I just feel great. And I hope today is another gift day in training because it, it was a good training day yesterday. And, um, yeah, everything is good. So, thank God for that. You guys... Don't forget to um, link me up. I had a webinar last night. Oh my God, my computer acted up so badly and my teammates won't tell me if they heard what I heard because it did record. We have I have a recording and on the recording it sounds like Mickey Mouse voice. And um, 
there was just a lot of scrambled voices like my voice was really going fast really really fast and scrambled like uh, mouse voices at a certain point of the presentation it would go from normal to fast super fast speed and i'm wondering was it like that in a live presentation i keep asking people nobody's telling me the answer like i don't get it i would love to know that because i need to know and um it would be helpful if somebody would say yeah it was doing that i could even record it what it sounded like and somebody said they don't know but take more the presentation and said it was a great presentation so i don't know um I just need to know what's happening with my um, computer. I tried troubleshooting it. I tried figuring out what the problem was. It happened once before. All of a sudden, every time I load Zoom, I go through my presentation like four times, five times. I go through it. Everything functions. Everything works. As soon as I start Zoom, everything slows down. It just runs so slow and everything moves in slow motion. Press stuff, it doesn't move, then it moves. It's just really an awkward place to be in. But if I had not already experienced that with trial runs with Zoom, I wouldn't know that and I would be stuck to like a um, mud in the water, you know, or what do you call that? A stick, in the, a stick in the mud, yeah, I would have been like that. So, but I just, you know, let it roll off me like, uh, like water rolls off a duck, you know, so. Pretty much the great thing about technology is it's almost always going to let you down. Isn't that something? Almost always going to let you down. That's that's crazy. It sounds crazy, but it's just how it is. Like if you don't have that millionaire um, status equipment and a great internet provider and all of that stuff going on for you um you can fall into issues you can fall into some issues with that and it's so funny because i did a speed test on my computer like four times before i even started because i just knew something was gonna happen but it, it is what it is you know every day is another day I shall be back on next Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time doing it again. And hopefully everything will play. And if not, I'll do the same thing I did this Tuesday. I'm there. I'm present and I'm 110% committed to doing this call every Tuesday until Lady Josephine comes back home. So with that being said, guys, you have a great Wednesday. It's hump day. We're halfway through the week and it feels great. Guys, be safe. Bye-bye.